Hi, I'm Otelia Cassidy. Welcome to Small Farm, Small Kitchen, brought to you by Madison Magazine. In this series, we'll be visiting farms around Wisconsin, meeting our farmers and learning about their products. Then we'll head to our very small kitchen where we'll make a dish using these local farm fresh ingredients. Today we're at Snug Haven Farm in Belleville, Wisconsin, about 30 miles southwest of Madison. And we're gonna talk with Bill Warner and Danielle Wood about their renowned super sweet spinach. So much young, that you... We are here in a long house full of <laughs> spinach. How many of these houses, hoop houses do you have? Um, we have 13 hoop houses. We only have spinach in 11 and a half of them. One of them is all flower bulbs and one is our, our nursery greenhouse but otherwise they're all full of spinach. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. People just get really addicted to sweet winter spinach. I think it's like a lack of greens in the, in the winter. Mm -hmm. People just love the sweet spinach, so. What makes it so sweet? So we actually let the spinach freeze. I mean, this time of year, it's not freezing quite mm -hmm. as much, but we, we promote the spinach um, to freeze. And so when that happens, the starches in the spinach convert into sugars. So the more it freezes, the sweeter it gets. And also the, the short daylight in the winter makes it grow a lot slower. Mm -hmm. So the, the leaves get thicker and meatier and they actually last in the fridge for two weeks or more. We also do a winter CSA where okay. members can sign up in the fall and then they're, they're guaranteed to get spinach throughout the winter. Some people compare it to steak or something. It's, it's yes. crazy. It's a lot meatier than normal spinach. It's definitely meaty. Yeah. A lot of other people, when they harvest spinach, they'll harvest the whole plant mm -hmm. and then they'll replant it. But since we harvest off the same plants all winter, we just cut it leaf by leaf. So it's, a, it's a kind of, of labor intensive. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go take a look at how Bill washes the spinach. When we first started washing spinach, we used to use just two wash tubs and go back and forth with the spinach and make sure it got rinsed three or four times. But then I had seen another farmer who had, um, had a bulk milk tank, which is what we're going to show you in a minute, and you just set up a jacuzzi motor with it and it washes the spinach much better. Um, This is a stainless steel bulk tank. It's either 300 or 350 gallons. All the dairy farms probably up through the 1980s had them. Um, we spin dry it. Uh, this is a fancy machine, but it has the same concept as a spin cycle on your washing machine. And so we'll get all the water out of there for you. It'll still be moist, which you want a little moisture on your vegetables when you're storing them. It's time to head back to our small kitchen where we'll make puff pastry empanadas filled with fresh spinach, potatoes, chorizo, and Wisconsin cheese. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make what I call a puff pastry empanada. It's not exactly an empanada, more of a turnover with a Mexican twist. I'm using a couple of my favorite vegetables, potatoes and spinach, which happen to be in season um, right now. So I'm gonna start out by just sauteing um, the fillings that will go in our puff pastry. So in one pan, I'm going to heat some olive oil and I'll start right away by throwing in some diced onion. Meanwhile, I'm also going to fry up a little bit of chorizo. onions start to brown just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add the potatoes. So I added about two cups of diced uh, potatoes that were already partially steamed so that they cook somewhat quickly. And I'm going to add some garlic to that. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and thyme to the potato and onions. Thyme is one of my favorite herbs to use with Mexican-inspired dishes. 
If the bottom of the pan starts to brown before the potatoes are fully cooked through, you can add a little bit of water and then cover the pan with a lid just to finish cooking the potatoes uh, without burning them. So the puff pastry will come in a package frozen and you want to make sure you give it time to thaw before we start putting the fillings inside. So that takes about 30 minutes. When the chorizo is brown and cooked through, then it's ready to set aside. I'll put it on a plate with a paper towel just to drain the grease off a little bit. And then we'll be able to use it in the turnovers. I'm also going to add just a little bit of pepper to the potato mixture. I'm just going to add a little bit of cilantro to the cooked potatoes. The last thing I'm going to add to the potato and onion mixture is spinach. I have some um, just baby spinach leaves here pre-washed, ready to go. About three to four cups of loosely packed spinach. Alright, so we're ready to start assembling our puff pastry empanadas. And I like to start with a little bit of cream cheese. Now I'm going to put a little bit of our potato spinach mixture on top of the cream cheese. And now I'm going to put a little bit of chorizo in the puff pastry that are non-vegetarian. We top that with just a little bit of cheese. Notice double cheese. We're in Wisconsin, people. A little more cheese there. I'm just using grated Monterey Jack cheese. Cheddar would work just as well, or any other cheese that you like. Then I'm just gonna fold the puff pastry. And I actually assembled these on a cookie sheet that I had sprayed with some canola oil. So they're ready to pop right into the oven and they'll be done in about 30 minutes. All right, so now I put them in the oven at about 350 degrees. Let's check back in about 30 minutes and they should be ready to eat. I think our puff pastry empanadas are ready. Let's take a look. These smell delicious. Let's plate up a couple and see how they taste. So I like to serve these with a little bit of the salsa on the bottom, a little bit of cilantro for some color, a little more salsa on top, and they're ready to eat. Thanks for joining us. You can find more videos at madisonmagazine.com.